Supergirl episode 11, Strange Visitor from Another Planet. Definitely a great surprise uh, from this episode. I really love the fact that we got to see White Martians. There was a ton of the emotional stuff in this episode, especially obviously coming from John himself. Uh, talking about losing his family, losing his daughters. They had the emotional moment at the end when he was talking to Alex and Kara. Uh, which also really ended up being funny when they are hugging. He's like, alright, that's enough of that. But it was a really emotional episode for his character. Great to see him um, go through such a, a different range of emotions because we got to see him very sad because of the fact that he lost his family in the past and we got to see him angry for the exact same reason because of the Martians that did that. And it was just really fun. Like, as soon as they showed up, I was like, that's a white Martian, and I was just super happy to see it, and I was very excited, and it's just, it was just a really fun episode because of that. It was it had really good action. Uh, we got to see, you know, the Martian Manhunter, which I thought was really cool. There was one point during the fight where there was basically no CG. I'm pretty sure that was like an actual person. that There was a CG head, but it looked really good. It looked like they could, you know, that was the first time I really looked at his character um, you know, in his Martian form, and I thought that is exactly what it would look like if they did it practically, and it looked really good, because they had it where he was, you know, right next to Kara, and, you know, she puts her arm on his shoulder and stuff, and I was like, that looks really good, like, it looked, if it was CG, it was insanely good CG, but I'm pretty sure it was just the head, um, that was still CG, but it looked pretty realistic, and I was like, that looks, you know, more than close enough to me as, you know, what it would really look like if they just made that mask. So I think in the future, if they do decide to go that route, it could work. I think this is a great example of exactly what it would look like, you know, if he was obviously, of course, uh, maintaining his normal um, height, the actual actor. Well, I well they would get a different actor to actually play the Martian Manhunter, but... You know, I thought it definitely worked. I thought it looked really cool. Of course, it was great to see him in that form in general because that's just really awesome. Um, the visuals for the White Martian were pretty insane. Like, they made them super gross. And that is kind of how they look. Uh, my only real example of how, you know, the White Martians look is actually from Young Justice. And I think that was a pretty good example. I was like, yeah, like, that's, you know, they look way worse in this than they did in Young Justice. But... I thought it was really good. I was like, you know, they look pretty gross. Um, they used the super speed a lot. Like, that thing was running all over the place. And it was pretty cool. Like, it was using its powers to its advantage. Uh, when they had, like, the trap at the end of the episode. And she, like, opens her mouth and stuff. That looked really good. I was like, that looks super gross. But visually, like, that's pretty cool. So I certainly enjoyed that. Um, like I said, the action was really good in this episode. The emotional content was just all over the freaking place like we have John dealing with the fact that he lost his family to you know this race his anger you know wanting to get revenge for his family and stuff like that and then on the human side of things we have Kat and her son and you know Kara trying to help them bond after you know decades of this kid not really having a mother well he's not a kid now but this guy not having a mother when he was a kid and it was really well done it was very good uh, that also leads to um, probably an expected, you know, sort of love triangle thing where there's a new character that comes in that totally pushes Wen to the side, F you Wen, and then here's this new random guy. So, of course, that's going to affect him. Um, and th that was interesting. I like their interaction in this episode where he's like, you know, he's still affected by what's happening. Uh, by the end, he's, you know, doing a little bit better. But in that opening scene, you know, he's just like, you know, like, please don't, you just instantly try to make this perfect again like it's just gonna take time I thought that was a nice genuine reaction like he likes someone that doesn't like him and that sucks like that's just how it is like that just sucks in real life so I thought that was a nice reaction the way they played that um odds are it'll end up just being worse once he finds out that car is just dating some random guy that literally just came to town so that'll probably uh hurt him quite a bit more but I'm um, sure all of that will work out and it won't matter because they're going to break up and then she'll somehow end up with Wynn, you know, down the line because that's just TV. But I like the way they did it for this episode. It wasn't super over the top or anything. It was just like he was upset by what happened because he wants to be with someone who doesn't want to be with him. And that was it. It was just like kind of in my space a little bit and that's it. 
And that's what so far that seems to be working, and we'll you know see how that plays out. But it was just tons of emotional content, lots of tears in this episode. Um, you know, I, I mentioned, I think I said this before, but when they do episodes like this where they cry a lot, or you know, where different people or they have a lot of crying scenes, it makes me think of Flash because like season one of Flash is like a ton of crying stuff. Like they get super emotional in that show sometimes. Like it's it's the funny show, but. Like, Arrow's like the dark, broody show, but Flash would be, like, super fun and happy, but Flash has done, like, a million times more sad stuff than Arrow has, and they've had, you know, people die on that show, and it's just, like, the way Flash does it is just, like, depressing, because it's, like, even when people aren't dead, they're still lost to their family and stuff, and it's just, like, jeez, that is effing depressing, so whenever stuff like that happens... And Supergirl, that's all I think of is like, yeah, it's a, I, I always consider it like a Flash type episode because it's a lot of uh, crying and stuff like that, which is kind of funny to me personally. I just thought that was funny. And, it, and it's a Flash episode in a good way. I like those episodes of Flash as well uh, where it is super emotional because it's just, when it's acted well, it's enjoyable to watch. And it certainly is um, in both of these shows. And it was definitely well done in this episode. But I was surprised that we got to see a white Martian. Uh, when I was looking up the episode uh, title for this one just before I started this review, I saw that the next episode, I don't know if this actually means we're gonna get to see him, but it's called Bizarro. And I don't, I mean, I know, I guess it's because of the other Supergirl um, from the preview, but it would be awesome if we got some hint of an act, of like actual real Bizarro or anything in that regard. I'm sure we we might get a reference because you know, based on how they have this history, they have the other superheroes already. Obviously, Superman was in one of the episodes. So we might get something from James where he's just like, oh, it's like Bizarro Supergirl. Like, he might actually just flat out say that. So, you know, it would be awesome if we got to see Bizarro, but it also wouldn't make any sense if they, you know, here's actual Bizarro, you know, in Supergirl or anything. But I thought it was cool that that's what they're titling the next episode because it's going to be Supergirl versus her sort of evil doppelganger, which does show up at the end of this one. So we see Maxwell Lord's plan is pretty much sped up, and I would love a, a really serious explanation as to how we went from that random girl to Supergirl. And my assumption is that she can just change shape because they mentioned the whole acid thing should be melting her and stuff like that. I don't know if that is what allows her to change or something like that or maybe it's the fact that she already had superpowers so they were doing that as a test to see how powerful her you know um changing skills were if she could like basically morph the inside of her body to keep her alive or something crazy like that I don't know but I'm looking forward to it I don't know how the, in the world this is going to end up playing out because you know he already has all the information like he didn't need to send a clone out. He could have literally just been like, check this video out, and here's Supergirl and her sister eating, you know, eating on the couch. And, you know, that's all he would need to do, really, to kind of just destroy her entire life, to be totally honest. But instead, he wants to completely destroy her, and I guess ruin her. I mean, he wants her dead, because they, they show that in the trailer, but it's like, why have her do anything you know, because, once again, he knows exactly where she lives, because it's like, alright, it's Alex Danvers, her sister is Cara Danvers. Boom. Like, he could, he, I mean, he has all these resources, he could find out where she lives and just send her clone to attack her, so. There's some more, there's a lot more than just, oh, I want her dead. It has to be like, I want to ruin her reputation, and then have her get killed off, but... Considering they're going to be fighting, you know, even in the trailer, they were flying while fighting, so everyone's going to know there are two Supergirls, so that's not really going to work. Like, after, you know, this is like the only time it'll work, because then she'll, you know, the real Supergirl's going to show up, and it'll be like, oh, there's two of them, one's good, one's bad. Everyone's going to instantly realize that. So, you know, that's not exactly going to work. So, I don't know what his real plan is. Maybe it was to lure her out, even though, once again, he could have just sent... Um, the clone straight to her house to attack her out of nowhere. But I don't know. I guess there's also the point where he's like, I hate aliens, but I like humans, so he wouldn't do that because it would cause a lot of destruction around just innocent civilians. I don't know. But 
I'm looking forward to it. I think it should be an interesting episode to see Kara go up against um, her own doppelganger. And I do really want to know what Maxwell Lord has planned. Because he has the information. It's going to be more than I'm taking down Supergirl. And if it's not, that would be interesting too. Because that would really show exactly how driven he is towards only you know taking down aliens. Because of course he was lied to by Alex a bunch of different times. But if he still doesn't give a crap and is like, I don't care if you lie, that means nothing. I only want to take out Supergirl. That still says a lot about his character. So I'm looking forward to getting some answers, figuring out who this girl is that's you know been turned into Kara. Because um, it's just really interesting. Because I didn't expect that at all. And it's like, oh, I, it was just this random girl who has like, you know, black eyes and stuff. And then poof, now she's a doppelganger of Supergirl. So interesting transition because I thought she was just going to be like you know under Lord's control and he'd just have control of a supervillain now but I was like nope I'm going to completely transform her into Supergirl so looking forward to that but of course definitely want to know what you guys thought about this episode so please comment below let me know your favorite parts your least favorite parts and they've done it I guess this will be the third time so far they've done it where they've added in characters to this show that I was not expecting. We got to see Superman for like 0.5 seconds in one episode. We got to see Red Tornado and this episode we got to see a White Martian. So I would love to know what characters do you guys want to see them add in? Because I'm sure they won't do um, other really big uh, heroes or you know some certain villains of course they, they won't be adding in. But if there's like I don't want to say any of the characters are obscure, but obviously characters that haven't had like the greatest representation um, as far as a even whether it's animation or live action, which characters would you like to see introduced into this show? Because we've had certain characters that aren't nearly as well known. Like I think a great example is Blue Beetle, who was getting some great representation from Young Justice, and obviously if you watch Young Justice, you know how that went. If not. That's a great freaking show, but I don't know if I can recommend it because Cartoon Network was being stupid and they canceled it. But it was really amazing uh, for what we got to see of it. Uh, but Blue Beetle was in that and he was getting some representation that he'd never had before. And aside from that, there was like one episode of Smallville that I saw Blue Beetle in and that was all I knew. So I wouldn't mind seeing Blue Beetle come back. Um, I think all the Teen Titans are pretty good at this point considering we had the old Teen Titans show. They've gotten... Uh, their moment. Also, there's a new Justice League versus Teen Titans movie coming out for anyone who didn't know that. It's going to be animated, of course. Um, that should be insanely freaking awesome. And Damian Wayne is actually going to be Robin because Robin is already Nightwing in that universe. So that should be interesting. But just to throw that out there if you guys want to see it. Um, but I want to know what characters you guys would like to see that may or may not show up. I think they'll do a lot of the, you know, like I said, lesser known characters. I hate saying obscure because. No comic book character is technically obscure unless it's a character from like, you know, way, way back early on that they don't use anymore because it's like a crappy, crappy character, which they have lots of those, admittedly. Both sides of the fence. Um, but I don't know. I, I would love, I would like to see Blue Beetle, but I don't know. It would be awesome if we got to see... Um, another Martian and there are certain characters that they could definitely do outside of the white well I guess technically it would be a white Martian but if we did um I forgot what the heck they called her I guess Miss Martian I can't remember what her superhero name was or her real name um or you know her human name but if we got to see her I think that would actually be pretty cool as well I would love to see we probably wouldn't get heroes. I think we'd get more villains, you know, lesser known villains than we would heroes. But I'd like to see, um, I don't know, like some of the characters that were in like the old Teen Titan show, I think would be pretty cool. And also recent, more recently from Young Justice, there are quite a few characters that I think would work really well um, if they added them to the show. But once again, it's a lot of heroes and stuff, so probably wouldn't be able to see that. But I'd love to know which characters you'd like to see them out, which lesser known characters you want to see get some of the um, recognition that they kind of deserve because they're really great characters. I know this would never happen, but man, if they put Static Shock in it, I would lose my mind. That would be insane. Uh, once again, heroes. But I want to know um, what characters you guys would like to see and also, you know, your expectations for the next episode for sure with 
you know, Supergirl going up against her own doppelganger. And, of course, what you thought about this episode in general, because it was pretty freaking sweet. So, please, comment below, let me know, and thanks for watching.